All right, so recognizing spiritual guidance. Let's turn our Bible to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. So what I'm going to do in this series of teaching is to back up a little. Is this a group that is wearing this green? Ladies, is this a group? Were you the ones I saw outside? I saw some people some things wearing something like this. I don't know if, you know, I thought it was a group. I, I love the way you put the cap on, you know, that kind of thing. All right. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. So this month we have been talking about the Holy Spirit and we're talking really a lot about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So remember our teaching is recognizing what? Come on people. Our teaching is what? Recognizing spiritual guidance. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 3 and I will lay some foundations again and we'll take it from there. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on your own understanding. So watch what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and what? Lean not on your own understanding. So watch this. So the reason why you do not consult God is because you don't trust Him. Because anyone you trust, you value their opinion, and you value their input. So it says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not on your understanding. So the reason why you don't ask God, you know, should I move to Canada? Should I go into banking? Should I move to America? Should I move to Kenya? Should I move to Abuja? Should I, you know, um, should I marry that lady? The reason why you don't ask God is because you don't trust him. So let me give you an example. Um, how many of you, when you have malaria, you'll go and see a doctor? Fantastic people. How many of you, when you have malaria, Instead of seeing a doctor, you go to the pharmacist and buy some drugs. Wave, let me see. Wow, almost the whole church, right? See, you know why? The area where you feel as if you know, you don't consult someone. The area where you feel as if you don't know, what do you do? You consult someone. So question, why are you not consulting God? Because you feel as if you know, I don't need his help. Because this is the same you. When you have malaria, you go, but if they say you have one big disease, hepatitis something, will you go and buy drugs? No. But the reason why I say, oh, malaria, I can figure malaria out. Malaria is a small thing for me. So you go and buy the drugs. So if you find out that often, you don't find yourself leaning on the Holy Spirit, the reason why is that in your mind, you got it figured out. But if you don't have it figured out, you will find yourself doing those things from time to time. So see what the Bible says here. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5. See what it says. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. So as a result of the fact that you trust God, what will happen? You will not be leaning on your own understanding. So as a result of the fact that I know that my decisions are wonderful, but I can't depend on them. I will not be leaning on my own understanding. The next verse says what? In all your ways do what? Acknowledge him and he shall what? Direct your path. That means that God wants to direct your path. God wants to show you the way, but he needs you to acknowledge him. He needs you to acknowledge him. That's what he's waiting for. That acknowledgement in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So watch this now. If I don't acknowledge him, then I do not see direction. So if I acknowledge him, then I get direction. So one of the things we began to say when we said this teaching is this, that man is not designed, man was designed rather, to depend on God for guidance. A man totally dependent on himself for guidance will often find himself in trouble. So, very powerful. And what does spiritual guidance do for us? Spiritual guidance is God's way of protecting us. Spiritual guidance is God's... So when they say, God needs to guide you, spiritual guidance is God's way of protecting us. Spiritual guidance is God's way of providing for us. Let me, let, 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 let's go back. Psalm 23. Let's read from verse 4. Psalm 23. 
the Bible says this. Watch what the Bible says. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me, and thy what? Thy, thy rod and the staff, they comfort me. Watch what he says. He says, the reason I will go through a very tough time and I will not be troubled is because of your divine presence. And guess what? It's only God's guidance that God's guidance, anywhere God's guidance leads you to, there will be God's presence. And God's presence is the ultimate guarantee. It's the ultimate guarantee for victory in any situation or circumstances. So why do we need what guidance? Why do we need God's guidance? Listen, because one, you cannot even fulfill the will of God for your life without guidance. You can't. Absolutely impossible. That's the first reason why you need guidance. The second reason why you need guidance is this. Guidance is the way God used to protect you. I, I said this to you earlier on. I said, there are certain evil that must happen that even God might not be able to stop. But the way God protects you is not by stopping that evil. God will what? Shield you away or guide you away through the evil. So I'll give an example. So when Jesus was born and Herod wanted to kill Jesus, what did God do? God did not stop Herod by sending angels. What did he do? He actually gave him divine guidance and say, pack your things and move to where? Egypt. Watch this. Some people, some bad thing wants to happen and God says, don't get involved in that. I say, God, no, no, no. I will pray. I will change it. Listen to me. Sometimes, the best you can do is listen to God. Not even sometimes, all the time. If Jesus Christ, God can tell him, run away from Herod. Why can't God tell him to run away? He said, no, no, I'm not going to run, no. The Bible says, he shall give his angels charge of ours. The angel he has given to take charge of you, I've told you to run. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Sometimes the way God protects you from losing money is by preventing you from investing in a certain business. It's not that when you now lose the money, Father, I'm a tighter. Lord, I'm a tighter. And he broke the devourer. Ah, I'm a child of God. This kind of... But listen, he was preventing you from investing in that business. Sometimes the way God will prevent you from a bad marriage is by preventing you from what? From marrying that guy. Sometimes the way God will help you not to get into trouble is by preventing you from traveling to a certain place. He says, he says that thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I've heard stories of people that they were meant to get on an aircraft to travel. And as about to travel, the Spirit of God said to them, do not travel, go back home. And they packed their things home only for those aircraft to have an accident. Disobeying the prompting of God can make you lose your life. It can take away your life. As a matter of fact, in the Bible, there's a man called a young prophet. God told him, do not stop. Do not go back the way you came. He stopped and went by. Bible says as he was going home, a lion met him and what? Ate him up. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. God's guidance is important. The way you raise your children. See, listen, everybody is doing something that doesn't mean to work for you. The fact that everybody is doing it doesn't mean to work for you. You want to send your children to school abroad? It's a wonderful idea. But just make sure it's God's plan for their life. Many of us are so interested, we, have, we, we want to lead our children in a certain way that God doesn't want them to go. And the Bible says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And see, it didn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go. He said, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. There is a way every child has to go. Every father, every mother must be interested, not in just raising children, in raising children in such a way that God wants them to go. Very powerful principle. Guidance is important.
So now that we're not getting this important, the second thing I want to say is this. How does God guide us? And I'm just backing up a little from what we've done before. How does God guide us? God, see, um, okay, let's do this. Um, who is here? Who is close by? Okay, Brother Ike, stand up. Stand up with your phone. You can come towards the, the keyboard side. God is a spirit, and because God is a spirit, he leads us spiritually. He guides us what? Spiritually. Watch this now. But I, I'm going to call. Is your phone with you? Okay, let me call you. Is your phone fake? How come it's not ringing? Can you hear my phone? Is your phone ringing? Is your phone, can, can you fly, let's see. T turn it towards us, turn it towards us. Is it ringing? Okay, question. Why is this phone ringing? Watch this now. I didn't say I want to call Brother Ike's phone. Who do I want to call Brother Ike? But the moment I pick up my phone to call Brother Ike, the only way he can receive this signal is that he must have what? A phone. Because that communication is from phone to phone. What does that mean? God is a spirit. If he's going to talk to you, is your spirit is going to talk to you. God is a spirit. So, so listen, eh? There's no, on my phone, you don't see Brother Ike's phone. No. I didn't even say I want to call Brother Ike's phone. I want to call Brother Ike. But when I call Brother Ike, Brother Ike does not ring. He don't see like, No. He doesn't ring. What rings is his phone. Because... I'm calling through a GSM phone, so what will receive the communication must be what? Another GSM phone. So if God is a spirit and God talks to you, what receives the communication of God is not your head, is not your eyes, is not your ears. What receives the communication of God is what? Your spirit. So the reason why many of us are not hearing God is this. You are expecting to hear God with what? Your ears. Meanwhile, God is talking to your spirit. You are expecting to hear God with your head. Meanwhile, God is talking to your spirit. You are expecting to feel God. Meanwhile, God is talking to your spirit. If God is spirit, then it talks directly to our spirit. Watch something else. Give the phone to someone in the choir. Just trace that someone in the choir. Come forward. Stay where you are. If I call his phone again, will he know I'm calling him? Why? If I call Brother Ike again, will he know I'm calling him? Because he's not with his phone. When you are not active with your spirits, when God calls you, you'll not be aware. So, God, this is God calling, 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 calling. But because he's not active, the phone cannot receive it. But it doesn't mean that God is not calling. See, that is the problem with you when you don't have a vibrant Christian life. It, it's not God. Someone says, God, why are you not talking to me? Listen, God is the one always talking. As a matter of fact, when Adam and Eve sinned, guess what? It was Adam that ran away. It was God that said, Adam, where are you? God is, so I say, where is God? If I'm saying, where is God? You are asking the wrong question. You should ask yourself, where am I? Because God is the one that is always saying, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? He's always saying something. But the reason why you cannot receive from the Lord is because, hey, what your receiving device has been passed on. Your phone has been switched off. You are not active. Your SIM is not activated. So when God talks to you, he doesn't talk to your head. He doesn't talk to your eyes. God speaks to your spirit. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So God speaks to you through your spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Thank you, sir. So God is spirit and his guidance are primarily spiritual and recognized and received through our spirit. God is spirit and his guidance are primarily spiritual and recognized by our spirit. God does not do kalo kalo. God, who should I marry? Oh Lord. Okay. 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 For 
God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. You put three names there. See, God does not lead you by that way, by ballot. I said, God is spirit. What you think is ballot is mathematics. So, I hope you know. If you calculate well, if you if you call words, though each syllable lands on a certain word. And many of you know because when we were younger, I used to play this thing. What do you call that thing? Huh? Why you use paper and you be like, slap me, kiss me, you know, go and buy me fish. You are stupid. You are an idiot. And don't say, oh, yeah, pick one color, orange. Pick this. The reason why is that it's mathematics. Once you pick one color, no matter how much you fold it, it's going to come out in a certain way. So the reason a lot of Christians don't hear God is this. They've not come to agree that God leads them spiritually and leads them by the Spirit. Did we just have a foundation of the current? Will you just ask someone to look at that? Say, God leads me spiritually. Jack Bar. That's a word I just learned. Praise the Lord. So, every opportunity, even when it's important, not important, I just put it there. Praise the Lord. What's another word I'm learning now? Huh? Huh? Come online. Is it come online? What? What's identity? Okay, let's keep going. First Corinthians, so I don't, you know. Some of you, you need to come online. Praise the Lord. Your spirit is asleep. You need to all to come online. <laughs> Some of you, you, you have been, you, that's why you come to church one Sunday. Even when you come to church, you are so dry. <laughs> if your neighbor is looking at just type, say, neighbor, come online. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If there was that, say, what's your identity? Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, First Corinthians chapter, chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. All right. The Bible says this in verse, verse 8. <laughs> Which none of the princes of this world knew, for if they had known it, they would have not crucified what? What does that mean? Satan doesn't know everything. See, the way some pastors talk about Satan, you would think they are fans. You have a message. Today, I want to talk about witchcraft. How can you use one hour to talk about witchcraft? Why don't we talk about Christ? And after that, finish, we're not going to cast out. You now see, everybody will not sit down. Demons will not be manifesting. People will not leave the church very afraid. Even the one that came with his wife that he trusted during the demon, like this. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, that's why many of you don't fall under the power. You know why? Because the church you came for, anybody that falls under like this is deliverance case. So, in a church like this, when the Holy Ghost is moving, he said, No! No! Because in your papa church, once you fall down, he said, Bring them out! Bring them out! Bring them out! Bring them out! And once they bring them out, next thing, Oh yeah! Out! And you knew what they, what they did to you, you didn't know you had no demon. First of all, when you read the Bible, people that fell down, the most reference to falling down was to the power of God. The other people that fell down from demonic conditions, they didn't just fall down. They were wallowing. They were foaming. There was, a, there was more display. But the falling down was more to the power of God. And that's why you're not being able to be blessed of the Spirit because of how you think. Teaching, very important. It affects the way you see life. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay. So, 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 it's just very important how you respond to these things. First Corinthians chapter 2. The Bible says, so I was saying that Satan is not that powerful. That's what I was saying. Do you know something about Satan? Everybody look up here. Do you know something? 
if Satan is right here in this church, it can't be in your house. It's not omnipresent. You never thought about it. See, in the book of Job, he said, Satan, where are you? What did he say? Going what? Throw and fro. Why? He, he can, if he can be everywhere, why does he go throw and fro? Does God do go and fro? He doesn't, God doesn't do anything. He sits one place. Hallelujah. Just his eyes is everywhere. <laughs> My God is powerful. Just his eyes is everywhere. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says the earth is his full stool. God wants to use, God saying, let me, so sometimes he just does, does like this. You just hear, you just, clap, clap, clap. God just put the right leg and change the left leg. Don't be, look at him, don't be Satan conscious. Don't be Satan conscious. But some of you even think the opposite of God is Satan. How dare you? The opposite of God is Satan. Are you okay? The, if you are looking for an opposite of Satan, Angel Michael is good enough. He was an angel, true of us. So let's go. So the Bible says, which none of the prince of the world knew. So what this, when the prince of the world is talking about demonic powers, they did not know. Satan did not know. So there are things that Satan does not know. There are things that what Satan does not know. So how does Satan know things? It's not that he's intelligent. He knows things because you said it. Either you said it to somebody and it was there, hearing it, or you said it to someone that had his demonic influence, so he would know it through their mind. That was why when just we raised from the dead, you know what just kept on telling them? Just kept on telling them, say, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody why. Because if they told people, Satan will know. So he told them, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell. Until after I've been raised from the dead. So that Satan will not know and walk in that plan. So the Bible says this in verse 9. But as it is written, watch this now. I have not seen, nor ye heard, neither has he entered into what? The heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Watch this now. You know what he's saying? He said, these are the way you receive information. Either by eyes or by ears. But he now brings a third part. He said, or by the heart. See, all of them are information. Either the eyes and the ears. Because they are, ear, they are end gates. But when he says the heart of man, that is revelation. You know why? Revelation is a form of information. But information is not revelation. What's the difference? All information comes from the senses, from what you hear, what you feel, what you see. But revelation is information that comes from your spirit without the help of your senses. So it's called revelation knowledge. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. The Bible says, but God hath revealed them to us by spirit. For the spirit search all things, yea, the deep things of God. So this is what I'm going to. That the spirit, the human spirit knows. When we say recognizing divine guidance, guidance is already in your spirit. So when you want to recognize guidance, it's not as if the spirit will find out what guidance is. No. What, where you find out what guidance is is this. The mind recognizes what the spirit known. Watch this now. So spiritual guidance or recognizing spiritual guidance is the mind recognizing what the spirit knows already. I'll give an example. This is the best way to put it. If I put on Google, Grace Mark on Google, a lot of videos and things will come up. Question. Was it the time I put it on Google that Google knew it? It was always on Google, right? But it was the time I began to search that it came out. I only recognize spiritual leading when I search for it through my mind. One more scripture. And maybe we'll close from here. How does God lead us? God leads us. God is a spirit and guides us by his spirit. First um, Romans chapter 8, rather. Verse 14. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Watch this now. How do you know you have bondage? Any prophecy you hear that makes you fear, spirit of bondage. Hmm. Kalia, 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 kalia. Ah! 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 I see accident. I see accident. I see accident. I, see, hey, what is that? I don't know. I don't know. But I see accident. I see accident. <laughs> Listen to me. Bondage has come. Can the Holy Ghost reveal that something bad will happen? Yes. But when he reveals it, it causes an assurance. It's an assurance that two things it can be changed or it will work together for good eventually but it never results into fear any prophecy you hear that results into fear is from the devil yeah. see what the bible says bible says where well, we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear the spirit of bondage always leads to fear so how do you know what you have heard is it bringing fear is the spirit of bondage is it bringing faith is the spirit of god and some friends of you, every time they dream, it's a bad dream. Tell them they, there's a demon worrying you. You never dream I bought a car. You never dream I was promoted. Your wife is always dreaming every time. Hey, honey, hey. I joined in this job. I, I, I dream my child was sick. I, I thought that police came to arrest you. Why do you always dream bad dreams? If it's not demon talking to you, God, God, why don't you do good dreams sometimes? At least have it 50-50. Glory to God. Some, uh, some are experts in bad dreams. So when they prophesy, every time they prophesy, is a bad thing. Hmm. Hey, Holy Spirit. Hey. I'm not saying don't dream of prophesy, but can you give us good ones also? Ah, you always dream of bad things. Are you from hell? But let's keep going. The next verse. So verse 16. The Bible says, The Spirit himself, or this scripture say itself, bears witness with our spirit that we're what? Hey, how does the Holy Ghost lead us? Watch this now. In the Old Testament, remember, they don't have the Holy Ghost inside them. The Holy Ghost was what? Outside. So the leading in the Old Testament was a lot from outside. They will see, they will see um, a bush burning. They will see water doing something. All of it was outside. But now that we are born again, the leading is not from outside. Yes, I think you need to come over here, actually. So watch this. In the New Testament, the leading is not from outside. Because we have received the Holy Spirit... The leading is where? From inside. The leading is from inside. How does God lead us? He says, the spirit bears what? Weakness with our spirits. So the leading is from inside. The leading is from inside. So, how, so, what is the, so how does God lead us? God leads us through what? The inward weakness. Someone say, God leads me. Through the inward weakness. So, what is the inward weakness? So, I want to define this for you. So, you can write it somewhere. The inward weakness is the weakness of the Holy Spirit about a matter of fact exposed to it that will bring about the Spirit's approving or disapproving or dis. What's the other one of, if you don't approve? Disapprove. So the spirit will either approve or disapprove. The spirit will either endorse or what? Unendorse. It's the weakness of the spirit. So let me give you a good example. Let me give you a good example. Um, but, uh, yes. Let me tell you how it works. Glory to God. Amen. Let me tell you how it works. So the inward weakness is like a scanner. It's like what? A scanner. Please come. So, you know what? As he is right now, I don't know what he's carrying on his body. Maybe he's carrying some guns. But watch it. If I just do this. Oh, you just say, if I just, if I just scan him with my phone. Pop on, pop on, pop on. Ah, I'll say, okay. 
what he said. How do I know something is there? The scanner revealed it. See, that's what the weakness is. When you expose your decisions to the Holy Ghost, you will hear two things. The buzzer will go off. Pam, 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 pam. But the challenge is that most of us do not expose our decisions to what? The Holy Spirit. So when you want to marry, when you want to, when you want to marry somebody, bring the scanner. Let the scanner go. Is it the right person? The Holy Ghost will scan him. Pop, pop. He said, no. You want to move abroad to Kenya? Bring Kenya to bring Kenya to God in prayer. Let the scanner go. Pop, pop. Go. See, but the challenge is this. Most of us never ex- watch this. If I have the scanner, until I apply the scanner to the person, it never works. If I don't expose my decision to the inward weakness, I will never know if it will approve it of what? Disapprove it. Thank you. I will never know if we what? Approve it or what? Disapprove it. Very big. Someone says, how do you know what to do? He says, the spirit bears weakness. That's the thing. The spirit bears weakness. Someone says, okay, pastor, how does the spirit bear weakness? This is a simple way you can start. If you want to make a decision, if there's something you want to do in your life, this is a simple thing you can do. Will you just bring it to God during worship? During worship, bring it up. During worship, just begin to worship and have that thing on your mind. That should I invest my money in this company or not? As you are worshipping, these two things will happen. One of the two will happen. If it's something that God wants you to do, as you are praying and worshipping, that decision will become stronger. You will feel joy. You will feel excitement. If it's not something you should do, what will happen? As you are worshipping, you just find a depression. You will find an isolation. You will find a disagreement within your spirit. How many of you have felt this before? What if, if I felt this before? You know what I'm talking about. As you are worshipping, you just say, you just say, you just say, you, you maybe maybe want to invest in a business and you go, oh, oh Lord, I'm not just in your mind as a worshiping. You just bring, just allow that decision to go to the scanner. You see that? Ah, why do I feel this way? Why do I feel this way? I, I told you about a lady last week thereabouts. This lady, you know what she did? She met a guy in church. I want to met the guy in church. If I let me tell you my own story. I, don't tell you, I, I lost money actually in this case because I did not listen. There's this guy I met in church. The way they introduced him to me, ah, ah, this, that. The guy comes to visit me every three days. Pastor, you know, I just became born again. You know, I used to do this, I used to do that, but I'm now, I'm now clean. You know, he's just giving me stories. Ah, I like the guy. But after about three months, he was telling me how he needed money. He's looking for money here because there's this thing he's going to do that's going to bring him money, but he needs money to unclear it. And how his father is a billionaire, but the case is in court. You know, but you know when you trust somebody, this is a church member. I didn't know I was on the journey. <laughs> I'm, I'm in one weakness, though. So, thank God my wife is not around. Because she doesn't even know this part. And I hope she's not watching online. So he just told me, just, just said, Pastor, I need five million. Huh? You know, West one is, you know, he's it's, it's already into you, you're into him. He said, Pastor, in fact, don't, don't even give me, make it an investment. So I went to meet my wife. I said, This guy said this and this and this and this and this. My wife said, Ah. But we don't borrow people money. I said, no, it's an investment. I said, I'm not at peace. Let it go. So I came back to meet the guy. I said, which money can I take that my wife will not know? This is me. I took two million. Because I also, I also was trying to make some extra money to pay a bill. I said, one day you have disposition, you will not hear the voice. But why didn't I go the five million? Because I had what reservations in me. The voice was saying no. So when he came, I gave him two million. He went as he was going. I said, "Should come back again." I said that that check will not go. That I should reduce the money. 
I think I finally gave him 501 million naira. Till today, my brother and sister. Till today. Japa. Himbo, Chocho, Money, Contract, everything. Japa. <laughs> I began to ask, what is your identity? <laughs> what? What, what is that? <laughs> the guy is offline, I'm telling you. Offline. See, but the reason why was this. I knew, see, I knew on my inside something was wrong. I just could not place my hands upon it. And I lost money. Listen to me. <laughs> Don't lose your children by being disobedient. Don't lose your marriage. Don't lose your business. When you want to take a decision, man is not designed to lead himself. Just check with the spirit inside and let the Holy Ghost lead you and you'll see a way. Let's set up and pray.